In today's video, I'm going to show you how OpenV0 was built. OpenV0 is an open source tool to generate Tailwind and React components. OpenV0 is inspired by the v0.dev project by Vercel. This is currently in private alpha, so we can't really use it, but we can take a look around like how it works. So here we can see a pricing component. You can see this is what the Tailwind went and generated. You can see there's 23 different versions of it down the side. You can see what each prompt is. So for example, jumping from this prompt, um, this is the current version we have, and then the, you tell the, the AI how you want to update it, and it goes and makes the update. If we go quickly to the first version, you'll see this is how it started off as, and then we kept prompting it more and more and more to get it to the final spot, how we wanted it, the final pretty version. Here you can see the code for it. That's a really nice animation. Here you can see um, it uses sort of Tailwind, React, uh, Shadzi, and components, and that's exactly what OpenV0 does as well. And if you want to add it to your project, you can do npx v0 add, and this is the name of the component uh, to add. So that's really cool as well. I really like what's being done here. I'm, I'm excited to get access as well. Let's take a look at how it works first of all. So very similar to v0, I'm going to choose a component. Um, which one should I choose? Fitness coaching pricing. So this is the final component that I've created. This is the first version, a sleek pricing component for fitness coaching program subscription plans. So this is a prompt the user put in. This actually comes with uh, V0, like this comes out of the box. I didn't write this. And now they're asking to make it look a little prettier. So it goes and does that. And then add a bit more color and so on. And then the prompt I went and added was make the background black. So you can see every step, you can get what the UI is and the final code for it as well. The code over here, very clean every time. And uh, here is the tab to iterate. You can also start a completely new component, um, like onboarding component, or whatever it is. Click generate and it will start. To run the project, you can CD into OpenV0 server and run node index.js. This is after you've done npm install on both the client uh, and the server. And here we're gonna run npm run dev. And you can see we have the project running on localhost 5173. This is the front end and the back end is running on port 3000. The project is split up into a front end and a back end. The front end uses Vite React. Um, a lot of the components is Tailwind code, React code. If we take a look at the package JSON, you'll see we use RadixCI with ShadCN for a lot of the components. React, there's not too much happening here. If you want to get a, uh, an idea of the structure of the app, we basically have two routes, the home page and a view component route. On the back end, we have an express app. This is where the main logic happens in index.js. We basically have two endpoints, component new and component iterate. So here you can see component new, it basically takes a query that tells us we wanna go and create a new component. And then once we get the response uh, for what that new component is, we basically, what's happening in this project is it saves a lot of files to disk. So you can see I've been playing around with it and you can see a lot of these files have been basically stored to my system. Some of it is actually quite cool and I'll show you a bit in uh, a bit later. This is the main logic basically for the app. Within new component, we have design task.run, context builder.run and generate component.new component. So let's take a look at each one. So this is taking in the request. This is basically just the prompt we got. The run function will look familiar to you if you've written OpenAI code in the past. Here you'll see a system prompt. We're telling it you are tasked with designing React components. You're given certain libraries to work with. Here are the components you can use. So we have a database of ShadCN components to use, and this is the user's query. I want you to create an app based on that. Now, if you're not familiar what ShadCN is, it's a front end component library. So basically, if you want to quickly go and build a dashboard like this, or the tasks page like this, and so on, you can do that basically using ShadCN components. You can see a list of all the components here. If you want a, an accordion, then you can sort of go to this page and so on. If we want an alert, same idea. Uh, more complex components might be a calendar. And sort of all you have to do to make this work in your own app is run an npx command and basically paste this in and you have your calendar component. Basically what's happening in this code is we have this database of ShadCN commands. Here you can see um, I have the accordion, I have the alert dialog, so on. And every single time we have the name of it, a description, where it is basically the docs path, how you import it. So this is import alert and so on. Um, and there are some examples. So all of this, we actually pass to the prompt um, to make it really clear to OpenAI how to use all of this. If you want to take a look as well, you'll see in the library, 
POC docs. Basically, this is just taken from the ShadCN documentation. You can take a look. Basically, a lot of the data has been loaded from ShadCN. Lucide is another library that we'll be using for this. The data has been downloaded here as well. This is what Lucide looks like. Um, you can basically very easily copy these into your own project. There's JSX or SVG. And there's basically a Lucide React package where we can import these. So here, for example, Lucide React. And basically, again, what we've gone and done is taken um, these files, which are basically from taken directly from the Lucide package. You didn't go and write each one of these out. But this basically gives an idea of all the different uh, icons that we can give to OpenAI to create our app for us. So there's an alarm check, an alarm clock, and so on. And we're going to pass all this data in. Next, what we do is we're actually calling a GPT prompt. Um, well, th sorry, this is the prompt. This is the OpenAI model we're using. It could be GPT-4, GPT-3.5. This is all the messages that we have above. And um, here we're using function calling. So function calling, if you're not familiar with it, is a way for OpenAI to call functions on your behalf. And what we're doing here is we're calling specifically just one function. There's lots of different ways you could have written this code, but function calling is definitely a cool way to do it. And the function basically, you're always going to be, OpenAI is going to automatically be calling this function, which is design new component API. And what does that do? Generate the required design details to create a new component. So here are the different parameters. Um, usually what this looks like is, well, it, it's a more detailed object. And we're actually going to scroll up in the code to component schema, and this is what it looks like. It's basically an object with new component name, new component description. This is of type string required and so on icons elements, um, library components we, we want to use. And basically, we're asking OpenAI to call a function with these different parameters. So tell me what the name of the component is, the description, and so on. And what is happening over here is we're not actually generating the code itself. We're generating sort of a first step to be like, OK, this is the task at hand. These are the different components you can use. Now, afterwards, I want you to actually go and write the React code for me. So I'm going to go and generate a new component just so we can see the console logs. This is going to take a bit of time, but you can see generate an onboarding, an onboarding component. So let's take a look here at what's happening. And you can start to see that the AI is starting to give us a response. So what's the component name we're building here? It's called onboarding steps. And it's got a new component description. So what we've actually gone and done in our prompt is we've asked it to create a description for us. This component will be an onboarding guide for users. It should consist of five steps with a description for each step and so on. Now, this is a, and it should have an X button and so on. If you take a look at this, this is a lot more detailed to what I put in here. So what's happening exactly? This is actually what we requested in the prompt. So what's happening here is new component description is basically we're asking it, write a description for the React component design task based on the user query. Stick strictly to what the user wants in their request. Do not go off track. So this is basically what's being filled in here. Here, what's being filled in is the icons I want to use. So I need um, the icon elements we want to use here are next icon. The library components we want from ShadCN are the button icon, the progress icon, and we also the, the OpenAI is giving us a reason why it needs each of these. So this is for the next button. This is to give progress on the component card and so on. So everything here we're doing here is sort of the first step towards building our components. Um, and we're not actually building them yet. Now what we're going to do is go to the context builder and understand what happens there. What we see here is we're getting our query, and this is basically the result of the previous task. And we are getting the library components from this query. And we're getting sort of, we're mapping over the names and we're finding them in the um, rag library components, which is basically, well, what it's doing is going to our Shad CN database. It's filtering out the ones we don't want. And now it's giving us these full objects. So now we wanted the button component. What we're going to be passing in is the full button component um, with, with all the examples and the usage, basically, for OpenAI. So we're not going to be passing it the entire documentation. We're going to be passing it specifically what it needs. Here are the sort of the different components. And here is sort of the user like is basically telling the AI, these are the components we can use. Um, this is a suggested usage. This is the code and so on. This is basically just passing the documentation and giving it um, to uh, OpenAI to use. Here you can see so here are some icon elements we can use and so on. So this has gone and given us the context for the next task. And this 
is basically what we're returning from this function and we're basically going to be passing it into um, the next into OpenAI in the next task. So this is where we actually generate the code. So we're, what we're passing in is the task itself from like sort of the first step OpenAI did and then the context, that's what we just took a look at. And now we're going to go to new component and you can see sort of the, that we write a context again. You're an expert writing your React component, components and so on. Here are some of the components we pass in, the description. This is the description we created with the LLM. Lots of warnings, don't do this, don't do that. Um, like tr trying to do our best to stop the AI from hallucinating. Here you can see, again, the GPT prompt we create. This time we're not using functions, but you can see they've actually like tried to play around with that. Maybe a second version of this app will use that uh, method. Here we just sort of console log this as it's being streamed out. We save this to our foot. We save this basically. Um, and yeah, but after all of this is done, what we basically get is um, code which looks like this. So this is basically now we've actually asked the AI to go and generate the code for us. And that's what's happening. So we're getting import react and so on um, and all the code that's come out. And once all of that is done, we basically get the component sent back to the front end and you see the code here, we render it as well. Um, and that's that. If you want to take a look at iterate, it works in a very similar way. I'm not going to cover that here, but we, we pass previous context. Um, something that we're being, we're saving each time is the previous prompt that we sent it. So all that context is saved. Um, if you want to learn from this project anymore, um, take a little bit of a look every time we're sort of creating these contexts. It can be like sort of a good idea to see how, how this has actually been built. Um, this is sort of the core logic of the app is basically these prompts. I mean, there's a lot of code happening here and it could look quite scary, but the, the core pieces actually happening here are the prompts. And there's basically like two, three files that actually cover that. It's two main prompts and sort of just putting that all together, sending it to OpenAI. A really good trick here, by the way, that you should use in your own apps. If you're trying to do something really complex, don't have OpenAI do it all in one go, do it in two steps. And here you can see a project where that was done really, really well. And sometimes it might be more than two steps. It might be five steps, but basically the LLM can handle like sort of more well-defined tasks or like smaller contexts quite well. You give it more and more and more things to do. You might run out of size. Um, there's all the sorts of things that can go wrong here. Basically what we went and done what we went and did was we created the context at the beginning. Um, we chose the specific components we want. And then once we have those components chosen, we go and pass it to the query again. But this time we pass it with all the different, uh, not with all the different documentation from OpenAI, uh, from ShadCN, but basically we give it the documentation that is specific to the specific components we've chosen to use. And it can go and do that. And we don't run out of size um, in our query either. If you enjoyed this video, if you want to learn more about full stack projects, become better sort of TypeScript, Tailwind, anything that we covered in this video, we cover a new open source project every week. And I'd be really happy if you subscribe to the channel. One other thing I'll mention is that we also have a learn from open source repository. Um, maybe you can be star number 200 in this project. Basically, it's a repository of open source projects you can learn from. So, uh, for example, if you want to know how cow.com works behind the scenes and how it uses Turbo Repo, you can find it there. If you want to know how Papermark, what we did last time, uh, covers TinyBird to allow you to query 50 million documents in half a second, well, take a look here, basically. So if you, wanna, if you're, if you know you're going to use TinyBird on your app, you can basically jump to the TinyBird section. And here you can see three open source projects that use it in the wild. And you can use best practices from them, learn from it, and so on. Dub.co, OpenStasis, and Papermark. If you want to learn how to use TipTap, take a look at these, TRPC, and so on. If you have an open source project that you think will be helpful for people to learn from, a real world project, then go and add it. Till next time, and I hope you enjoyed.